Hey, welcome back to Shifty Speed Shop. Uh, another beautiful day out here. Hopefully it isn't too windy for you guys. I just wanted to show you uh, the latest project that I drug in because I don't have nearly enough of them ready to go. But behind me there's a 65 Chevelle SS and it's actually a correct SS car by the uh, VIN number and you can actually see the holes from the original emblem on the rear quarter. This car, from what I understand, was last titled, plated, or whatever you want to say, in about somewhere in the early 70s, like 71 or 72. And there's some evidence on the front frame rails that they must have uh, hit something with it. So the front clip is missing. I've got all the sheet metal components found for it now, but this is the way I got it. A buddy of mine had it. It was sitting up in a tree row and cut me a really great deal. And so I figured we'd go after it. But, you know, being in South Dakota, it's really hard to find a rust-free car. And since this thing was only on the road for six or seven years, whatever it happened to be, um, it is absolutely rust-free and amazing. So um, there's one little quarter path or quarter size hole behind each rear wheel. And somebody back in its life, I'm sure it, towards the end was probably uh, owned by some young fella must have cut the rear quarters to fit bigger tires on it so I do have a little bit of rust repair but as far as floor pans uh, frame rails trunk not a hole underneath the car um, the rockers look like they're hundred percent solid in it really great rig so let's take a little look I'll give you guys kind of a view of it and maybe what we'll do is we'll walk around and I'll show you some of the other projects that we have uh, waiting to come in and hopefully we can get a little bit more work done over this winter. We're getting the garage insulated and getting heat put in it so I can actually have somewhere to work. And you know, summers are just busy. When you're in South Dakota, you get about three good months of weather. So uh, the winter is definitely gonna be a time where hopefully I can crank out some more episodes for you guys and show you some more stuff. All right, so let's take a little look at the car in depth. Um, so first thing that I had talked about before was that I saw the damage on these frame horns out here, actually, uh, my friend pointed it out to me. And like I said, best we can tell about 1971-ish, we're guessing 72, somewhere around there. So um, the car was not on the, on the road for a very long time. So anyway, you can see everything is extremely clean here. And one thing that I have noticed is that motor mount is ripped apart. And I'm sure that that was probably, I'm gonna guess that was part of the accident, I should say, maybe not that I'm sure. But let's take a look at the trim tag. And these are great things to have to decode your car. Um, when I referred to it as, you know, I verified by the VIN that it was a SS car. So these first three digits here are what you would look at. So 138 would be a V8 car and a 137, I shouldn't say V8 car, but a, a V8 SS. And a 137 would be an SS with a six cylinder. So you can tell that this thing is a true um, SS car and it had a V8 from the factory, which is pretty evident by the mounts. Um, the 741 below, so that's the interior. And I think that was a medium blue. This was a bucket seat car as you can tell by the 741. I think the bench seat cars in medium blue are like 742, if I remember right. It's been a little while since I looked at it. I am not an expert at these things. I'm not, a, I'm not Steve Maggs. I don't know all this stuff off the top of my head. And then these letters here are your paint codes. So that is mist blue, which they also, I guess, referred to as a medium blue, but it's kind of a light metallic. And then since it has, D is the color for mist blue, and D again, you can tell that it was an original solid color. It wouldn't have the uh, two-tone on it. So verified mist blue car with a uh, medium blue, which is a little bit darker colored interior. I don't know if there's any panels in there that still show it well, but, um, and this is a pretty good look at the original mist blue paint. You can't really see a lot of the metallic in it, of course, because this has been sitting open to the elements for 40 years, 50 years, whatever it's been. So, um, kind of a nice color. 
we'll see what goes back on the car at some point. Um, so let's take a look at the car. Of course, there was it's been through hailstorms and who knows, kids and vandals and whatnot, but the sheet metal is actually in really good shape on it. The hood was, or the roof was depressed a little bit, but reached underneath, popped it up, and it came back down. I think we 10 years ago, we had a nasty uh, winter blizzard that was feet of heavy snow up here, and it was wet. It's probably what got that, but you can see the body, let me get back here a little bit for you, is in overall great shape, no rust. Um, this white recoat that somebody did on it does not really cover up anything so and here is the hackery of the day these are where somebody went in and you can see the original fender uh, arch starts there the, the cut starts there, I should say and goes around and they likely did that to fit a bigger tire these cars are pretty limited that tire that's underneath it is a 205 you can see there's plenty of room remember these were a 14 inch rim on these cars stock um, I talked about the rust on the car, and each side has that same little rust spot, but that'll get taken care of when I repair that wheel arch. This is a trunk lid that my friend found somewhere and threw on the car, starting to put it together. I have another one, so I think this would be like a base trim. So this, if there's not too much in the way, I guess you can see it. That would be the actual SS trunk trim. So a um, little better trunk lid. I do see, I don't know if somebody shot a hole in it or what they did over there. So let's take a look in the trunk. And there's one of the fenders. I've got another load of stuff. He had gathered a lot of parts for this thing. So the interior is absolutely packed full. I guess I should have showed you the... Uh, floorboards in there but um, again trunk floor is solid and the gas tanks out of this one so you can definitely see the trunk floor from below and I guess there is looks like there is a little bit of rot in some of this and there's a little bit of damage back here but that happened so I guess add add that panel to the list of things but in South Dakota, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, with all the salt on the roads, cars, um, they rot away. <laughs> Something fierce. I mean, you guys have seen the 53, so. And here's where on the quarter panel, you can see in here's where the SS logo would be. And these are original steel. So again, another reason to verify. So the rim on this side actually has a 255 tire and I think when I repair this, I might roll the inner fender back so I can run up to a 255 pretty cleanly. So take a little look at all the treasures inside. It's kind of chaotic. I guess you can see a little bit here the mist blue color on the original door panels. But floorboards are solid. They're absolutely as solid as they can be. Somebody, I should go back around there and show you the, uh, um, the wonderful shifter hole that somebody covered. But let's take a, a look underneath. And this is where it really tells the story about how clean this car is. So you can see the frame rails. There is absolutely not a speck of bubbling on them. Let's see if we can get underneath. Um, all the floorboards are absolutely just solid. So I guess where that accident took this thing off the road, it definitely helped to make a better car today. Again, it's actually probably a little better look of that mist blue paint. So be kind of a nice looking car. Um, somebody had grab the drum off of it so i'll have to use a tractor to unload it <laughs> turns out i've got some frame rails i could just tie on to that i don't that i can't damage so um let's go take a look at the shifter so again i guess earlier i said that ss was an appearance package 
So it didn't guarantee you were gonna get the high horsepower 327, the four speed, any of those kind of things. So this was a V8 car, but those are the shifters for a column shift. We can show you on the inside what that looks like. Um, check out this little bit of happiness. So these came with a single pot master cylinder on them and at whatever point somebody tried to get brakes working, I don't know what, but they just used the one uh, part of the master cylinder and they pinched off the line on the front chamber. So, um, take a quick little look in here. Again, floorboards, but you saw them from underneath. They are absolutely solid. But here is the hackery that somebody did to put a four speed in this car. So, you know, likely the last owner was probably some younger guy and this was his hot rod drag strip legend, you know, and it just kind of is what it is. Um, on the column, there is actually where the shifter would go for the three on the tree. So I think it shows 32 thousand miles but judging by six years and sorry I keep on getting my finger in the camera six years and the amount of wear on that steering wheel obviously it's 132,000 but it really doesn't matter at this point so um, I'm just really happy with the car with putting something that has this solid of bones on it um, putting cars together is usually not the cheapest way to do it but it is what it is. Uh, we'll get this thing thrown back together and I kind of like the look of the Kragers. I've never been a huge fan of them before, but kind of fits the car. So uh, there is the 65 Chevelle and let's we'll get some work done on the uh, 53 and hopefully get this guy rolled in. I'll probably, he'll just start off with a small block in it and I don't know, whatever transmission. I gotta see if I can actually fit my leg between the clutch and the steering wheel this prosthetic I have um, doesn't doesn't you can't bend your ankle so a lot of cars I have a problem with getting stuck on the back side of the steering wheel so if that's the case I'll put an automatic in it but either way I can I'll save the uh, pedal linkage or the pedal hanger and if somebody wants to put it together in the future I'll have all that for them so here is the 65 Chevelle SS so let's uh, get to getting it unloaded and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got it uh, chained up and uh, ready to go. I hope this is some pretty boring footage and there's nothing to really uh, see by it, but let's see how this works. I've got the tractor chained down the front. We're just gonna pull it down the ramps and push it in right over here in the corner behind you guys.
All right, so here's the beginnings of the 65 Chevelle SS. So I've got quite a bit of other stuff to do ahead of it. Like I said, I'm trying to get some heat and insulation knocked out in the garage. So I've got a better place to work for this winter. It's been great working outside this summer, but I, like I've said before, I am in South Dakota and very shortly here that will not be a very productive place to work anymore. So I um, wanted to get something out to you guys. I appreciate all the subscribers. I'm absolutely blown away at watching the numbers go and I'm gonna try to get you guys out some quality content and some stuff that you really like. I know I said I was gonna do a project walk around, but I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter. I know we're all super busy and you don't have 45 minutes to watch me do two different things in one episode. So um, I'm sure you noticed the teal G body behind me and it's got kind of an interesting story in a way. And that's our parts car for the 53. Um, we'll shoot another episode here and we'll go around and we'll take a look at some of these other project cars. So I've got some what I think are pretty interesting things waiting in the wings and hopefully we'll get some more done. I'll, I'm actually retiring in probably about a year or so. So at that time I'll definitely have more time to get you guys knocked out more episodes. That's the goal. We're trying to get it done. But summertime is short and it's busy and my kids had activities and we need to take a little family vacation. And I'm sorry, but that stuff does come first. If this thing waited for, what, 50 years for somebody to come start working on it, it'll wait a little bit longer. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys out there. Uh, the thumbs up, the likes, if you throw a co comment on the videos, I try to get in there and answer them as fast as I can. You know, I'm still working a full-time job on top of all of this, so, but I'll uh, certainly be there. If you have any questions, let me know, or if there's anything you, uh, if any of you guys have any experiences with something like this old 65 Chevelle, let me know. I'm always interested in hearing stories. So, thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next time.